excited about this week sitting opposite me, Dylan Johnstone. You would probably may have come across uh, Dylan on Instagram under D-Y-L-A-N-J-A. He talks a lot of motivational stuff. He's very hypey at four o'clock in the morning. He's that, he's that Instagram account you can't open on the bus with sound on. I love it, mate. And the reason you're here today is you've created something really exciting in the space of um, tradies, the healthy tradie. Yeah, definitely. So obviously it's called the healthy tradie and we're launching up in the construction industry, hopefully to go a little bit viral and change some lives. Well, let's have a chat about that. And uh, before you start, mate, like what's your favorite product? Uh, BSC Pre Ultra um, every morning. I just love the Pre, these boys, don't they? They just dig the Pre. It's honestly the new tropics. That's what I really like about it. So yeah. I hit it you five hit o'clock it? in the morning. I know you do. I, I get watch to the your gym. <laughs> climbing, climbing. <clears throat> By the time I finish, have a nice cold shower. It's a big slap in the face. And then um, I just don't really tend to drop back down from there. So I tend nice. to go through the rest of the day with that high energy and really sharp focus. So well, for let's me, rip in and talk about some of the the cool things you're doing. Beautiful. Welcome to the Body Science Podcast, bringing you everything you need, want, and should know about health, fitness, nutrition, and training. As always, the information contained in this podcast is for the information purposes only and is not designed to diagnose or be prescriptive to treat, prevent, or manage any injury, disease, or other health related condition. <laughs> Today's podcast is brought to you by Pre-Ultra, an extreme high stim pre-workout scientifically formulated for anyone wanting to push it further than they ever have before. A powerful combination of performance enhancing and nootropic ingredients delivered at industry leading dosages. Pre-Ultra gives you explosive power, strength and intense pump alongside the laser like focus, mental clarity, energy and drive to annihilate your next workout. Welcome to Body Science HQ, the home of fit, happy, healthy and today we're going to talk a bit of muscle. We've got the big man in, Dylan Johnston, and mate, he is here to talk about something he's created that's really special, the Healthy Tradie, mate. Like, let's talk about what is a Healthy Tradie. Healthy Tradie is a little initiative that we've brought on board, so obviously one of the big key... With your employer, like you've done this with... Yeah, a, so... And you work for a large group? So I work for the Southern Program Alliance down yeah. in Victoria, and we're currently removing all the level crossing removals down What does there. that mean? So all these level crossing removals where the trains go across and the boom gates come down. Oh, uh, yeah. So they've identified about 52 of them that need to be removed because people keep getting Gee, stuck and... Job. Is a massive job, so we'll probably go for about the next six years. And you're you're working in the health safety advisor capacity there? Yeah, so I'm a health and safety advisor down there. So obviously managing workplace <laughs> compliance and obviously looking into that health aspect. So you started this healthy tradie program internally, and it's sort of got a bit of a swell going. Is it's growing? Yeah, so we're creating a bit of a culture on our project, which is really good. So mm-hmm. normally there's a lot of uh, focus on productivity, yep. and uh, we're taking a big step away from the workers. But we've decided to move into the health and wellbeing space and really push this as a good initiative to look forward to improving the workers performance out there so what's some of the things you're doing and i know you sort of you sort of fluked into this with uh i remember asm was doing their 30 day greens challenge and uh, we were having a chat and you said oh can you send me some greens if i remember correctly this is sort of how it all happened yeah so being from the fitness background do have with bodybuilding and stuff like that i've got a big passion for the health side of things so (laughs) working in the construction industry you notice a lot of people don't really value that at all so it was about trying to slowly introduce that and uh Small stepping stones, I guess, into that space of giving people exposure to the health You've been very humble there. I'll tell you how it really went down. (laughs) We were having a chat and he said, can I get some greens, mate? And I said, oh, look, how many guys you got on your side at the moment? I'm sending down some greens for everyone. He goes, I need nine bags. I'm going, okay. Next thing he sends me pictures, he's lecturing 300 people on the benefits of taking greens every day. And you you actually worked out nine bags. You had enough serves and your bosses saw you doing that. And it really, I mean, you look physically like you're training, you're into fitness and health and everything, but your bosses actually went, oh, hang on, there's more to this and this guy just eating protein and lifting weights. Yeah, so I think it was about 450 <laughs> people at the seminar. 450? And yeah, and I was super nervous. You would have been got up there that and, day, uh, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, I don't normally get nervous, but when you're standing in front of 450 people. Of your peers too. Yeah, and mm-hmm. you look like little ants out there <laughs> and you're just standing into the distance and you're like, oh. You Did know. you picture them all nude? No, someone told me to do that and then mm-hmm. I was like, oh, best not. I yeah. might get distracted. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, yeah, so we jumped on board, did a little spill and then obviously people saw the value behind what, what we're trying to, to push there as a team. So I've got some really good people that are working with me and we're just trying to really push this along and really focus on the health side of things, which will tie into the mental health. And mate, it sounds like you've got some really progressive thought leaders in your business above you that are working to make this happen too. It's a, you've talked to me about you've created some internal training programs and challenges. You've worked with us with some with Harriet, the dietitian, in creating some programs that you're going to roll out to on a much bigger scale on that corporate world. Yeah, so we're obviously trying to put a massive focus 
on the health side of things. As I said, I think health side of things is more of a solution to the problem that's identified within the construction industry being the mental health related illnesses. So if we can target this, I think that we will fix a lot of people's mindset and per- perception yeah. on a lot of things in life. So I've got a really good manager who supports me and supports my decisions and we're just doing our best to try and bring on board a lot of people, but obviously trying to influence the construction industry takes some time because a lot of these people are new to change and change management's one of those things that's always very, very hard to push within any field or any industry. Oh, mate, and you're talking, you know, thousands of employees, et cetera, in the whole group. You know, it's, it's a big gig to suddenly, and what are you, 23 or something? 24? 23, yeah. 23-year-old telling these guys that they need to get fit and they need yeah. to change their lifestyle. They're looking at you going, yeah, mate, you got youth on your side. <laughs> I used to be like that. I mean, if they all look back at their pictures, they weren't. But it's a really interesting thing for you to talk about because you've you've created like a, uh, do you want to explain what a lunchbox program is? Do you want to explain like what you put together? Yeah, so it's it's a slow introduction. So obviously we change management. It's like anything. You can't just go in and change the entire workforce you Can't overnight. make people want to be like that either. No. Yeah. So you need to slowly introduce things and you have to get people behind it and educate that process so that they're wanting to go out there and they're wanting to make that change themselves. So this lunchbox idea was about making healthier alternatives in the workplace. So normally what we do is we get together once a week and we'll have pies and sausage rolls and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. currently at the moment, we're doing a 10-week challenge. We've got like 52 people on board. It's like the biggest loser, essentially. And to promote that, we're taking away all bad alternatives. So when we do events, when we have like big meetings, we just, we've, we've just made a straight cut to only healthy alternatives. So, so you're looking more at fruits versus sausage rolls. Fruits, yeah. uh, protein snacks, bars, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah. that's where we, we've tied in with Body Science and really mm-hmm. built that partnership to be able to give these guys healthy alternatives in the workplace. I mean, I know that Harriet and I, myself and the team, we really enjoyed putting together some of the video content you wanted in relation to healthy thinking, healthy alternatives, healthy eating, because that's the stuff we live and breathe every day. We, we love. It was really interesting with doing that program with Harriet because I didn't have to explain to her what the brief was because she lives with a tradie. Yeah. She was all over. She goes, no, Greg, you've got this wrong. We need to do this. We need to do this. And I just went, wow, this is gold. And Yeah. And I think, I think that's where we were able to leverage it very well. It's really hard to explain to someone who doesn't work in the construction industry what it's like, especially with the hours you do work and the yep. pressures that are associated with that. Obviously, with production, there's a demand just to make things happen, make things happen. So a lot of these guys, they're taken away from those healthy alternatives because they just need to eat on the go. So yep. having someone who can come on board and help us design something like that, who has an understanding, I think was the real big push for that. That's good. And, mate, and, and, and it's more than food, as we all know. It's it's a combination of everything. Like you've, you've worked with the crew down there. You've started basketball teams. You've started a gym culture. What else have you done? You, you've put a, you put a challenge together. I just heard a second ago, you put a challenge together to push each other. And I mean, it's not a challenge where people buy a pack and do all that. It's about challenging them to make a change. Like why? Why are you doing this? A lot, like I said, there's a massive, there's a massive issue, especially within Australia, but a massive focus in terms of emergency services and uh, the construction industry around mental related illnesses. So I think for us, you can sit there and identify these problems and have people come in and talk about mental illnesses. And, and that's really great, but it's not really solutions based thinking. So we're going to take a leap forward and trying to do something about it. So I think what we're trying to do is move into that and build that community, build that support network, encourage physical well-being. And I think by doing that, we do eliminate some sort of mental illness within the workplace and help these guys get that confidence, get out there and continue on. And mate, you've got a few confidence stories too, haven't you? Like a few things, a few guys have come to you and said, oh, my kid said this and you know, a lot. Yeah, like, it's yeah. been, it's, it's been really rewarding, you know, like having a supervisor who's in their forties come up to you and, you know, say, get excited to tell you that they've, they've joined the gym and they went home and their daughter was like, oh, daddy, I finally joined the, like, go daddy, go daddy, you know, like, um, just hearing that from, from men that have never really made that switch or that healthy alternative in life, very powerful. And I think that's where you get your value. Um, you're always going to have people that do go to the gym and they are healthy, they are work, they are working out, but to have someone come on board who has never put themselves in that position um, and get excited about that change is very powerful. And you've helped guys with programs and understanding how to do things and stuff. You've been really influential in that part. Yeah, we're just trying to give as much value that we can to these guys and really guide that process. So, you know- Guys um, and girls. Guys and girls, yeah. yeah. Like as I said, yeah, we've got some traffic controllers on board and you know they're really giving it to the guys they're like i'm i'm, I'm, I'm gonna kick your butt yeah nice. In so it's really good you got a bit of friendly competition and that was the idea behind it so with the 10-week challenge we we did up a poster and we did like the little characters so like i think we took like the dodgeball theme where you got average joes and yep. the serpents and stuff like that and we named the subcontractors so the guys build that little bit of rivalry between themselves and i think when you do that you create that community and people want to be a part of it yeah mate create the tribe people love it people love it like you you sound like you're a 40 year old let's be honest 
unless you're 23. <laughs> and just looking at your CV here, you left school, joined the army. Yeah, so I was taken away from my, my, my parents when I was about 12. I grew up with my grandma. Mm -hmm. I was a little bit of a, a shit, so to say. Yeah. In trouble, got in trouble with the law a few times. And I think one day I walked into my grandma's room and my grandma was looking at the defense force and I was like, oh, what's that? She's like, don't worry, you can't do it. And I was like, mm, yes, I you, I'm going to do it. So, <laughs> How clever was that was grandma? It. So yeah, so she tells me, she's like, I knew that you would be that kind of kid that would yeah. do it. So I guess I went there and I uh, learned really quickly. I'd never really had like a father figure growing up. So to have someone come in there and give me that structure, give me that discipline, taught me a lot about life. And I think my relationships with my family grew a lot stronger after that because I valued them a lot more. So in the army for? In the army for for about two and a half years so yeah. I ended up getting posted to Darwin and it's one of those things where it's either it's for you or it's not for you and um, I had an opportunity to come up where I moved into corrections which was really good so I had an opportunity to go out there and Is that push Darwin myself. as well yeah so I got posted to Darwin and then at the age of 19 I was so you were in corrections at 19 I was yeah one of the youngest in Australia to go into corrections so at wow, 19 that would have been daunting for a young man wouldn't it yeah at first it really was when you're walking out into a floor full of like 46 of the hardest criminals in the Northern Territory yeah it can definitely be daunting but you learn a lot about life I learned a lot about a lot of different things I was a hot-headed kid and uh, you don't think about things when you're out there drinking with your mates or you're with people and when you put cuffs on someone who's 21 years old and uh, they've just ruined the next seven years of their life it just makes you understand how important life is and how quickly your circumstances can change by a split decision oh mate that's um that's heavy that's nice so how do you go from the army and into prison officer into <sighs> let's get into health health, health and, and safety, safety. so like, like this is actually a really good story um i got a phone call from one of my mates who worked in melbourne who was a superintendent so pretty much like one of the big bosses down here and i wanted to come to melbourne and i was looking at trying to get down to um, victorian corrections and it, it just wasn't working out we had the royal commission going on at that time and it just wasn't looking good from anyone from northern territory to really go anywhere but stay there so i got a phone call and he pretty much said i've got a job for you i asked him what it was he said i don't know yet I said how much does it pay he's like i don't know and he's like you've got a week so i literally took the biggest leap of faith i've ever done in my entire life i didn't tell any of my family because I knew they wouldn't support it as a normal family probably would tell yeah. you. So I sold my entire house. I sold my car, packed up with my girlfriend at the time. And then I literally drove down to Melbourne and then just stepped into the unknown. Wow. That's a big step. Yeah, it was a very uncomfortable step, but I learned a lot from that experience. You know, that taught me a lot about life and a lot about going out there by yourself into the unknown. You've had a lot of life stories. I mean, leading into your army, you are brought up by your grandma. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Into your job choices to your final job destination like what drives a 23 year old to make those big decisions i've always just wanted to push for more you know yeah. like always find a position where i get comfortable and i'm like i can do more i can do more or something comes up and i've got an opportunity to go and do something amazing so i guess when these opportunities have presented themselves in life i've kind of really gone i've only got one shot at life i want to really want to do this so i want to make the most of it i don't want to look back and go i wish i didn't take that opportunity so anytime like something comes up i'll just run with it and if it fails it fails i've learned so yeah mate when does a bodybuilding career fit into all this you're 23 like there's also a bodybuilding career in there and you've built fair rig so yeah like i guess like for me being in the army when i was 17 i was like the smallest of the kids out of all the guys there you know i was i was all super that good army food. yeah you just like shovel in and you know like being young you get sucked into it so was brian bailey your colonel in darwin when you were there i wouldn't really remember the colonels i didn't really okay. speak too much then he's a good mate of mine good job brian you've really left an imprint on people <laughs> Uh, yeah, look, to be honest, I didn't really He's have to do He's the one standing it. at the front that you always to face every day. Yeah, he probably was giving yeah. me a lot of bad things to do. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. you can tell him I said thank yeah. you for all the exercise. We try and do bad things to. to him now. He's a good man. <laughs> Yeah, so I just hated being the small kid. I'm, mm. I'm a short guy and can't get taller. So I was like, if I can't get taller, I'm just going to get wider. Nice. So I was like, I want to walk into a room and people give me a bit more respect. So yep. I guess that that's where it all stemmed from. So I really started Did you think that myself. worked? I, I mean, your, your physique <laughs> did, did you, but do you think people gave you more respect from that? I think the more, like, in in some aspect, people do. I think they respect what you're able to achieve because I understand the hard work it takes to get Absolutely, there. But yeah. I think as I get older, the more I realize, I think it's your energy and your passion that you do have that people respect so looks aside they do have an impact but it's what you bring to the table i yeah. think that is more it's important package 
Yeah, it's a package. You do a lot of competitive bodybuilding when you're... Yeah, yeah so I competed in IFBB for my division, placed yep. twice in Australia. So Sorry, placed second twice in Australia. Yeah. One in NABBA WFF and yep. then obviously in IFBB yep. down in Sydney. So that was a good little journey. I learned a lot about myself during prep. Um, I really pushed myself really, really far. Probably made a few sacrifices that I probably shouldn't. But at the time, you know, these are all lessons learned. Yep. Took a step back away from family and my relationships at the time and put in a lot of energy and effort towards that vision of... I don't know, going to the Olympia or stuff like that. And, you know, you call in sick to go to the gym and all these things. They just Sick to up. work. Sick to work, yeah, you know. And I see it now, a lot of people, you know, they, they want to be working hard and they want to be like going into like things 100. And when it comes time to prep, they take that focus off their own personal development and they really shift it into that gym space and you know they'll and miss you got to do that events. to be a competitor let's be honest yeah it's you one know? of those things yeah. it's, a, it's a very it's a win-win you know you sacrifice a few things but I guess it ties down to what your morals are and I guess where you want to be in life I think for some things it is important to do it if there is like a future in it but I think for me for bodybuilding I have to be real with myself and, and say you know I'm not going to be a top 10 Olympia and mm-hmm. I think bodybuilding is one of those sports where you have to be really really honest to yourself in terms of like am I willing to spend the next 15 20 years spending Spending all my money on all these supplements, all these gym gear and trying to look the best and all these fake tans and shaving myself every week, you know, <laughs> just trying to impress people on Instagram, yep. you know, and you look at the um, Australian bodybuilding community, there's only a few people that have really kind of stepped out there and made a career for themselves in it. So you have to be real of yourself and you have to assess the situation and whether that is actually something that's plausible. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Nice. Mate, you're, you're a big, you're a big fan. You often send me DMs going, Greg, what are you thankful for? Greg, you know, what's, you know, really positive stuff where do you where do you draw all that from i think i think you are what you create so there's a thing i talk about your artificial environment Mm -hmm. so something i push really really hard for a lot of people like myself the people that are around you every single day they're not motivated they're not people that are driven they're not successful so i think exactly what i tied back into uh, before like you are what you create so when you can go out there and message people and create that what i call the artificial environment you surround yourself by that content so by going out there and sending messages to these people you build those relationships you build those networks and you're constantly seeing positive thoughts so when you reply and you're like I'm thankful for this you know it just puts a smile on my face and then it makes me think about what I'm thankful to as well and it's the same thing with anything else you know you send a, like a video to your friends or your mates and you're like hope you're having a good day like up excited four o'clock in the morning yeah. going for a run you know like you just uplift each other so that's why I call it an artificial environment so it's something that you, you can create you create what comes in rather than your direct surroundings yeah so mate 23 I'm going to harp on that all day just you've got a, you've got a process you do every day yeah and I mean it's very visual if anyone follows you they know what you do every day but can you just go through your mornings like they're pretty intense yeah so I wake up in the morning and then obviously my alarm goes off and then what time are we talking four o'clock in the morning four o'clock every day which you know the the dedicated gym guys girls know that but yeah yeah. and then uh Sarah my partner she's like no not again (laughs) so (laughs) So um, she's been really supportive and stuff like that, and it's it's been a bit of a team effort. So I get her on board. Hundred percent is a team effort. Yeah. So you know she doesn't necessarily doesn't want to get out of bed as quick. Obviously in Melbourne it's pretty cold, so that's where the dogs come in handy. So yeah. the moment you say walk, they get super excited. On, yeah. So it's it's all over. So you she walk has the to dogs get out. at four o'clock every morning. Yeah. So every morning four o'clock straight up, I have my BSC Ultra Shred. Yeah. Get ready and go for a quick run, and then I go for a run for about half an hour. Get back at 4 30 get straight into it get dressed for gym take two scoops pre-ultra three scoops deep by six o'clock in the yeah, morning yeah <laughs> that's why i'm full of energy so <laughs> um, it. just buzzing high high energy and just positive thoughts i think like and how so you, are important. you training to positive thoughts like is that your thing when you're at the gym or are you what do you how are you training i think um i surround like like i said i created that artificial environment so at first you know i was the only one of my friends waking up at four o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. but you know now i've got a little community of people that are waking up yeah, at four o'clock that. and yeah. they're just sending me messages of like i hope you're out there killing it and stuff like that so yeah. when you're seeing these messages when, when you're getting these videos from your friends and, and your peers and this little community about being out there grinding you just there's no way you can be tired at four o'clock in the morning you know you've got all and this support behind gym you. session and get the most out of yourself yeah so yeah. Like 
like by the time, you know, I get in the car, I drive half an hour to the gym. Oh, do you really? Half an hour away? Yeah. So yeah, I work about an hour and a bit away from home. So, so you started your journey to work with a gym stop on the way, you don't go yeah, backwards? No. So yeah. I, I drive straight straight to the gym. By then I'm like, the, the heat is on, I'm sweating and yep. I've been rapping the whole way, just singing <laughs> songs and just, yeah, you know, getting there. And then I just train for about half an hour, 45 minutes. Yep. And then I just go straight into, back into my routine and my There's discipline. There's a cold shower a cold there somewhere. Where's that cold shower? Yeah, straight after the workout, cold shower. And what are you doing that for? A discipline, you know, like when you wake up in the morning and that little voice in your head's like, oh, just stay in bed five more minutes, you know, you got this, you got this and we can we can make it up later. We'll just skip the walk and stuff like that. Yep. That voice gets diminished because when you're about to step into a cold shower, that voice is a lot louder. It's your focus. That's, yeah, yeah. It, it's a lot louder. Get ready. So Get ready. the Get moment ready. that you, you, you can take control of that voice and you own it, the weaker that voice gets over you. So the ability to step into a cold shower and stay in a cold shower, you gain power yeah and that's what it's about it's not fun i don't enjoy it at all i have to hype myself up for it and i guess like i'm staying accountable to people about doing it every single day like people go i look forward to your, sh your shower videos yeah i'm like i need to start like a private snapchat or something and start <laughs> making money from it <laughs> <laughs> oh i think you've got enough hustles going without, <laughs> without going down that line mate one of the exciting things you've done is you you create an entrepreneur club by social a lot of people you're talking to you went the next step and you said let's just talk motivational shit like You've got yeah. your account, which is motivational, but it's your life. Yeah. Then you've created the Entrepreneur Club Apparel. Yeah. Is it your account? Yeah. It, it's, it wasn't necessarily about creating apparel. It was about creating mm. a community yep. of people that are like-minded. Like I said, that artificial environment, I'm going to keep harping on it because it's something that I really, really push. I think it's really important, especially for people who don't have people around them who are out there trying to achieve things. Yeah. So it was about creating that artificial environment that, you know, one day when you can walk down the streets and you see someone wearing that shirt, you just automatically know what that person's like and you can just go up and spark a conversation and you know people wear it with pride yeah, you know nice. they go in there and they're like i am an entrepreneur i am hustling i am grinding i'm doing what it takes to be out there and, and be accountable so i guess it's like a little bit of pride and uh, a little bit of community as well yeah man I've, I've read quite a few of your reposts from guys that come in and go mate you've changed my life you've done this i'm i've got a promotion now i i, uh, I took the time to change what i was doing and ask could i do this and could i do that because you often talk about people you don't ask you don't i hear you talk about tell people what you're thinking a lot is that something big to you like let you Seeing don't hide those your messages, emotions. I think like uh, I think it's gonna be real with mm -hmm. people, and I think that's what we we lack in this community. Yeah, I think we're building around like a snowflake generation where snowflake we tiptoe, yeah. we just tiptoe around the truth and stuff like that. And you can't be real with people, especially being like a manager and being in the corporate world. You know, people surely tiptoe around the truth to save people feelings. But and you're a cheeky bastard. Like you told one of your supervisors the other day during the challenge, are you happy when you look yeah. in the mirror or something? Yeah, like I literally just walked up to him. I'm like, pretty much, I said like, you gotta have a hard look at yourself. I'm like when you go home and stuff like that and you look in the mirror are you happy with the person you are and I guess like that's he just laughed. the person he, he, yeah, yeah. he laughed but you know like I, I know that he, he went home and he really had a hard think about that I think it's really important to do that like we can't tiptoe around people telling the truth I think if you really care about someone you need to tell them exactly how it is not just tell them that things are going to be okay and you'll find the way you are if something's wrong I think you should just tell someone well I guess through the army and the, the prison you didn't learn to sugarcoat shit did you like it was, no this is the way we're going to do it and we're going this is what's going to happen yeah, yeah. like uh, it's like I've got many stories of the army where I definitely got brought into line and got told exactly how it was like there's times where I failed in the army and uh, that that hurt a lot. Um, I had a lot of pride as a. I was I was seventeen. I was pretty green, you know. I, I, I'd never failed at something in, in, in my life at that point. I remember there was like a driving test I had to do where I had to drive a truck in the city. I actually remember failing. It was the worst because I, I I've always been a confident person. So to fail in front of a lot of my peers at that time, like that, actually crushed my soul. Yeah. Like it actually hurt. I, I actually cried in front of people. Those little lessons along the way have, have really brought me back down to earth and really humbled me. I guess. Did you eventually get to drive a truck in the army? Yeah. Yeah. I drove and I passed, <laughs> yeah, nice. you know, so that's the thing, you know, when, when, when you do fail as much as it hurts, you just got to keep going and get back up and move forward. Mate, you're really passionate about mental health. You talk about it a lot in, through your Insta, you talk about it a lot through the groups of people you talk with. Why, why is mental health so important to you? I think mental health is a massive thing mm -hmm. for me because I can relate to a lot of these people, mm -hmm. you know, I'm real. I don't jump into a suit and tell these people like this feel good story, you know, like a lot of the stuff I talk about is through my own personal experiences, you know, being being at a home since I'm 17 and living across Australia, for a lot of this, I've been alone. So I haven't really had that support network. So I can understand and reach out to people that are alone and going through this and just show them that there is light through that. 
So I guess like the mental health thing really resonates with me because I understand it's, it's just more than more than what people just put out there and what we are seeing through the Are You OK campaigns and stuff like that. Yeah, because I know I was first drawn to you from your social via uh, David Rockhard in yeah. relation to you put out a post about a body science product, which I loved, of course. And you were you were talking about the negativity on social media and how people use it as keyboard warriors to put out negative like not supporting mates, not saying good, great work, not saying good job, not saying love this, not even liking stuff. You were very yeah. verbal at one stage about people not even liking things. Like, why the fuck do you follow my Instagram if you don't want to like it? Like, stop telling me DMs and I'm an asshole. Like, you were pretty public about that when most people have got shit. Let's just Instagram, take it easy, just walk nicely. Yeah, well, I think a lot of people are like... <laughs> I guess there's an expectation that you have to maintain this certain figure or statue within, I think, society. And I think that, like, everyone's pushing this fake shit about you have to look a certain way, you have to drive this certain car, and you have to wear this fancy suit, or you have to do this certain product this way. And there's just an expectation. And I think that when you start being real and you start telling people what it actually is rather than fucking holiday here, holiday there, Mm -hmm. fancy cafe here, I think people get a little bit butthurt about that. But, you know, I'd rather be out there telling people exactly how it is than being another fake person on Instagram yeah, saying nice. follow this follow nice. that. so you're also working on another project I mean you've 23 you're pretty busy you're, you're working on a project called welcome to hell and obviously you can't let too much go on that yeah. because it's some coming up but who wants to create something called welcome to hell ah man like this is a really good question and something that obviously ties into what I want to do with my journey and and everything that's kind of led up to this point here it's about changing lives so welcome hell is taking ordinary people and making them into extreme extraordinary people essentially Mm -hmm. in a blender in a lift what are you doing (laughs) so i put a lot out there and um, a lot of it's under wraps exactly what i kind of say you're gonna take people off site and you're gonna yeah hang out with them for a couple of days doing some cool shit so we take people away for 22 hours into the complete unknown we remove all control that they have over expectations and we really push the barriers of mental resilience to really drive deep into what drives these people what keeps these people going and you know I, I think through this experience people really get an understanding of who they are because a lot of the stuff that we do people will not be exposed to you know I've got some really good people on board that have worked with special forces and run the selection course over there I've got people who currently train corrections and have served over in Af- Afghanistan so okay. I've got a really good network of instructors for this course and the stuff that we put together is the first of its kind in Australia and I'd say probably the world and what we do is we really do push people to the yeah. absolute limit to see what they're truly made of and at the end they can walk away and know that they can accomplish whatever they want nice mate obviously there's a whole lot of uh outside of logistics and making things happen there's a lot of legal issues and a lot of things you got to when, when's this thing coming to play so i've got a course launching on the 29th and the 30th and yeah exactly oh, what of november wow so how do people have a look at that if they want to join it so there's an instagram page obviously yep. welcome to hell dot au s mm-hmm. so that's on instagram obviously you can jump onto my instagram and you'll see me talking about it every single day and do you want to drop that your course. insta for people out there that don't know it. yeah of course so at underscore dylan jar so d-y-l-a-n-j-a underscore jump on my page even send me a message if you want and can redirect you so anyone who wants to be welcome to hell get on board with that one that's a big one <laughs> definitely like, man i'd just like to i'd like to step backwards a bit to the healthy tradie program again yeah so why do you even care as a young guy who's obviously you're a health and safety advisor yeah and that's probably more a protocol based health and safety like you're looking at don't do this don't do that like high Vs, got the right boots on, like the yeah, basics. So I think that, that I think that's everyone's perception. A, a yep. lot of everyone's perception is like health and safety is this policeman walking around, don't do this, don't do that, you yep. know, yelling at people and stuff like that. But the way I look at it is uh, behavioral based safety. So understanding why people are doing what they're doing, you know, so not just necessarily going out there and saying, why aren't you wearing your body hard hat? Why aren't you wearing a harness when working at heights and all this kind of stuff? You get to understand the behavioral side of things, you know, it might not necessarily be that they're doing the wrong thing, but it might be that 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 procedure might not be relevant to those scope of works in that area so it's a lot more than just going out there and policing people and stuff like that which i think a lot of people fail at so i focus on the behavioral based side side of safety i like that because i mean obviously when things go wrong on the site you're talking about it's death it's it's a um, major injury yeah 100 yeah. percent. and i guess like when you start looking at complex lifts and all this kind of stuff with high-risk construction work a lot of things can definitely go wrong and you really got to zone in and you really got to understand the scope of works and what truly can go wrong wrong and assess those risks accordingly. And part of that with your healthy tradie program, I mean, obviously you're talking diet, swaps, lifestyle. I think, well, why, why did you go down this path? Like, I just want, I'd like to dig deep on why you actually did that. It's about creating a culture. Yeah. I think 
I think a culture is a massive thing within a workplace, you know. I've been on jobs where you go to work and people drinking energy drink, eating pies at seven o'clock in the morning and you see these people, they're just broken down, they're worn down, they're tired. When you have that environment, when you're surrounded by that environment, it's just toxic and negative. Like you speak to many people in construction, that's pretty much what they'll see at seven o'clock in the morning. But if you take a shift on that and you create this culture, suddenly you've got people coming in, telling them the stories about going home and being excited about their family, being on board with the journey as well. And everyone's coming excited being positive being happy to come to work you know we've got stretches after pre-starts where we've got like a whole bunch of construction men just sitting there doing stretches together and we all take turns on who's going to run those stretches as well yep. nice so it's about creating that community Excellent. and about building that culture how does a 23 year old bodybuilder fair bit of artwork on the body as well get taken seriously by you're talking big companies so you're talking 50 and 60 year old guys that are leading the way for this company how do you actually make an impact because let's be honest if i was running a six billion dollar job and i'm guessing that's You're not far off yeah type of number that it's at and a 23 year old bodybuilder came up to me and started telling me that we should all get fit and healthy i'd probably look him in the eyes and go yeah you're a great kid can you fuck off you know in my head yeah so honestly, how, did, no, how did you like, get around that it took me a long time and i guess you build respect over time i think it's with anything no matter how old you are I think what, what you what you bring to the table is the value. Obviously, people have an underlying opinion of you because you are younger. You do have I, a couple of tattoos know, and, and stuff what, like the, that. The, the youth of today have created a culture of what they are. Like it's yeah, not, yeah. people getting face tattoos and yeah. and uh, earrings and stuff like that. And for for people that are in their fifties and sixties, you know, like that was so frowned upon. Mm. But as a as a culture and as a society, we are developing and changing. You know, you could you could bring it back to you know the acceptance of diverse genders and stuff like that in the workplace. Like as we get out there, people are changing the world. Changing changing society is changing and we as a whole are changing so I so think- what so I, I get that i get what you're saying there as, as a young guy and sorry for cutting you off i'm no, 50 so that's my job <laughs> to cut you off obviously i apologize for that but i want to know how you broke through the barriers with these older guys who obviously when you're 50 at a role you've been doing it a long time you you've got a fair idea and a fair lot of knowledge and what you're talking about these wellness programs is new in the world of corporate yeah. so what did you do to break down those barriers for a, a large company to suddenly think oh this is a probably a good idea i think leading by example for one when you lead by example people have a lot more respect for you when you tell someone something and they don't listen to your advice and you were right you can go back and say I fucking told you mm. <laughs> that kind of gets you the respect yeah that's probably so. not going to work real well the 50 year old though so I guess so you just stayed on the game you I just stayed kept on the game I, I, I educated myself about a subject yeah. and if I didn't know what I was talking about I just sh- shut up and listen yeah. you know and I think that's where a lot of people go wrong they try and have an opinion on everything but if you don't know what you're talking about don't open your mouth because without you realising it the moment you start commenting on things you don't actually know about you lose a lot of respect from people so it was a matter of educating myself around what I needed to know making comments where I could have value and input. Really interesting. I was talking to our sales team this week and there's some new data coming out that the average sales process is like 13 calls to make a new sale. So back when I started years ago, it was like three and I used to, we used to succeed because we did four. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. a lot of people give up after one or two. Oh, that didn't go well. I'll, I'll walk away from that. Mate, how many times did you have to knock on that door in your role as a 23-year-old girl knocking on 50-year-old doors going, mate, just because you're unfit doesn't mean we all should be and you know our mental health's important and this is what happened we all need to train gee we might let's start a basketball team or i want to start a fitness challenge or i want to do surely these guys are going holy fuck how many ideas has this guy got and how many times did you knock on that door to make that happen i still knock on that door yeah it, it doesn't go away obviously being in a large workforce that we do have there's all these new people coming in new faces so it's about building those relationships and you build a reputation for yourself so like i said when you make comments on things that are valid and you bring value to the table you build a reputation around and it's a very small industry so people do speak so when they hear about you and they hear about the good things you're doing over time, that will definitely develop. And, you know, when you surround yourself around supervisors that help push those kind of initiatives, you know, like one of the construction managers that brought on the idea about the basketball team and he really pushed it. So, like, it's about working together with like-minded individuals and, again, building that reputation and knocking on the right doors. Obviously, there's doors you and can't knock on. And that's a big thing on. too because it's really hard to walk into an upline because everyone's got ma- managerial structures on the way up. We've created this hierarchy in business that, you know, you report to them and they report to you. You're like, obviously, Obviously, you're 23, so you're not sitting at the top of the pile of decision makers and forward thinkers in the company. I'm trying to get out of you. How many times did you knock as a guy that just wants to wanted to make change before someone actually went, okay, uh, let's listen to this young guy because he's actually got some facts. Sometimes I just risk it to get the biscuit. Yeah, I guess like risk I, it to get the biscuit. <laughs> I just fucking do it, and yeah. then if I get in trouble, I get in trouble. So yeah. that 10 week challenge, I didn't actually tell anyone I was going to do it. I just fucking did it. Yeah, and it worked out well. 
well and everyone yeah. was like this is a great idea like yeah. oh can we do a project wide i'm like yeah i'm like we'll do it as a trial here and then yeah even your green thing that you, you presented to 350 400 people like what well, initiative initiative you just gotta go out there and just you just gotta fucking do something if you want to change something you have to do it you can't just sit there and ask people yep. all these questions and people respect you more when you go out there and, and you try these new things or and how did you get the time to stop because obviously on a big job when you bring people together for your lunchbox meetings or whatever it is you were having at that day that you, you're talking massive dollars you got what you have 300 people in a room yeah you know all being paid wages all on the books and then you got up and presented something and then got everyone to do a, a, a taste test and you talked to i know we put a greens book and you talked about greens and all that like how did you get that over the line like you're 23 mate like this is what i'm trying to get out yeah. of you i want to talk here about the hustle I've got and this. really good like i've got a good manager who, who backs and he was me sick 100%. of hearing you like how many times have you hit this guy before like, you got this going that's what i'm trying yeah. to get out of you it's like just really i don't know you like need really... to understand this mate it doesn't happen overnight like you, you didn't walk in and go i want to do a greens taste tomorrow to throw to people and he's gone oh yeah let's do it i just I, I've, I've got a, got a reputation for being like a a man full of energy yeah. bouncing around the office with all his ideas and i just started doing shit and that that's the essence of it i i did shit it paid off i got good response and when you start doing this on a day-to-day basis and, and you take the initiative just because it's not your job role your job description doesn't mean that you only operate within those those boundaries when, when you go outside of what you're paid to do i always say you paid for your value not your time yeah so if, if you're going out there and you're doing initiatives and you're putting in the extra hours like there's days that i stay back four hours after work you know or like i'd stay in back then i'll be the last one leaving the office yeah so y- yes there is sacrifice to get these things across the line but when people see that you're putting in the energy and effort and they respect you they'll back you and it's about it's about making them look good as well so if, oh, absolutely if, if team, you can bring yeah. something to the table where you make your bosses look good and it's not just your idea it's it's a, it's a team's idea as i said that community you're going to get more people across the line so you'll, you'll influence a lot more decision making when you make it either their idea or a team idea Nice. So at 23, you got to cop one on the chin occasionally just to get yeah. something over the line. That was a great idea, boss. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. That's how it worked. It's a law of power. Yeah. You know, I've, I've read a book about it and uh, there's a lot of different laws out there. So you never undermine your boss. And if you can make your boss look good, make your boss look good and you get pay rise. <laughs> yeah, nice. Hey? <sighs> Nice, I like it. Mate, one of the things that you've really enjoyed in your life and and you've got this hustle entrepreneur thing going is Dr. Craig Duncan and his journaling. You're a massive journaler. Yeah, yeah. I think it's really, really important. I know I, you are. I did you try keep to fucking do the challenge me on things like, oh, yeah. Greg, what's your deathbed scorecard look like? And yeah. yeah, it's really, really like at first it was something I really struggled with. Some of the questions in there make you think about yourself, don't they? They do make you think mm. about yourself. It wasn't until I had a boss who really kind of drummed into me. He kind of like was like, where are you at? What you got to do and i couldn't really give him anything so yeah it was a big shout out to my boss rob yeah he kind of really instilled that into me that i started doing the the journal and then obviously after doing that for a while i come, I come across dr craig duncan's 100x book and yeah. you know i i love what he puts in there about the sudden realization of how precious life is and and death is a reality and i think that's where people get get lost you know you see a lot of people get to their 50s and 60s and they go what the fuck have i done with my life i mean i definitely don't want to be that person so i guess for me that's been an important part of taking control and really being accountable for my time so that's where the, the journal ties in i'm actually really tracking through what i'm doing and you know i've got a whiteboard at home where i track my every single hour of the day really? down to the dot yeah so and you were telling me that and shout out to sarah like you were telling me that you actually schedule half an hour with her every day yeah and it sounds really bad like but it, when you explain this people i just want people to stop and think and have a little pop moment here it's actually really clever what you're about to say yeah so i actually got this idea for one of my good friends jamal and so i sat down and really assessed my own relationship and actually asked do I actually spend time with my partner and it was actually a question that he asked me and I said yeah I do and then he's like do you spend time cooking or cleaning or on your phone I'm like I actually had like a big think about it and that was essentially the only time I, like we, we actually spent together you always had a job or something to do it was something busy, to do it, it, it together, wasn't yeah. actually one on one focused time with, with no distractions where we actually yeah. sit there and actually have in depth conversations about life and what we think about you know and um, that's one thing we do in our walk you know I'll be walking and I'll ask her what is she grateful for today yeah. you know know and it's when you actually have these conversations with your partner you actually understand a lot about them and the way they process information and their perception on life you know so you really get a big understanding into who your partner actually is because the conversations you have is not revolved around social media or work or just cooking and cleaning and just getting the average household stuff done it's living 
it's living it's actually being in the moment and making the time and things do come up and that half an hour does get get shut so don't hold me to that because yeah. Sarah will be like there's times where you don't give that half an hour but yeah life does get in the way she but can't get off the couch at the moment anyway yeah she? no she no, can't right. so yeah. you'll be good it's about making a conscious effort and actually understanding that you, you need to make time and I, I think it's really important you know people who have kids to make that time where it's one on one and they just have half an hour just to say hey how's things going what are you thinking about you know I don't think that people actually do that so I think it's really important that everyone just takes a step back and spends quality time Mate, I really love that because I we were all talking before we started the podcast and everyone's going oh yeah I went to dinner last night and there were 11 people we were out with and 10 of them were on their phones and somebody else said oh yeah I went to breakfast this morning everyone was on their phones and you know even in down in the lunchroom like people are on their phones and we've we've really stopped giving each other time we're, we're giving people more time in another way but we're not giving them personal time we're just giving people yeah. time that has no reward apart from a like or whatever like <laughs> 100%. And that's really interesting that someone at your age would go, I'm going to schedule half an hour for my partner. Yeah. It's made me think today. I've sat back and thought, fuck, I need to get my shit together too. <laughs> Hope sure he's not listening to this podcast. Uh, so definitely. Might have to start scheduling some time. I just need a nicer word than schedule. Yeah, it, it does sound horrible. And I, I think when I actually put that whiteboard life, up. Well, exactly. Mm. I, I put that whiteboard mm. up and I actually had a few people message me like, that's actually horrible that you'd only give your partner half an hour. But when you go through and you actually explain that I do spend time with her outside of that but that heaps of time but that half an hour is just solely one-on-one -on -one, you know no distractions no yeah. cooking no cleaning yeah just just us two us. living in the moment yeah man i love that that's probably a really nice way to tap out of this podcast i think before we do i've got one more thing for you and this is for all the tradies out there tell us what a day in a healthy tradie should look like so that's you, a hard question i know mate <laughs> day in the life of a healthy tradie yeah i think again i'm going to touch back on the community mm -hmm. so it's about who you're around you know coming into work being positive being happy Happy, you know being physical as well you know it's a massive part of a lot of these guys role so having that mobility and i think when we start looking at it and diving into it a little bit deeper with the diet side of things these guys are able to go home and not only have energy for work but have energy for the family and stuff as well and come back in with a positive attitude not going home at the end of the day and just crashing out on the couch or having a sore back or being unfit and not being able to kick the ball with their kids so i think that's the essence of the healthy trader is to create this culture that we're not just construction workers that go to the servo and eat pies and drink all these drinks that are filled with sugars we're actually going out there we're working hard we're looking after ourselves and we go home and put the same energy and effort into our family as well well mate i hope your healthy tradie program explodes i think it's a great initiative by you and your company do you want to shout out to your employer like yeah so obviously the southern program alliance down there so obviously it's a joint venture between common rail asiona and uh Lend lease yep so we'll come on board together as a joint venture to hopefully deliver many more packages forward thinking companies i love hearing it Beautiful. i love it enjoy mate thanks for coming up i really appreciate Thank you. You any time. Time. Before you go, what are you thankful for today? Oh, being here, I think. Being in here in the moment with a legend like yourself. Ah, you're a funny bastard. <laughs> I did love it though. Thanks, mate. That was really good chatting. I think a lot of people enjoy that. Perfect. Thank you. Game over. Thanks, kids. So, Dion, today's podcast was brought to you by our partners in Fit, Happy and Healthy, ASN, Nutrition Warehouse, DY Discount Vitamins, Fat Burners Only, Evelyn Fay, Mr. Supplement, or find a retailer online at bodyscience.com.au forward slash retailers.